Ebert Baptist, let me hear you. <laughs> well, it's good to be with you this morning. Uh, good to see everybody here. Sorry we're still under these, uh, these weight, uh, sort of situation that we are, but we'll get through it. And uh, one of these days we'll be able, you'll be able to come in here. We'll all be able to get together. Is everybody, uh, can everybody hear me? If you can hear me, honk your horn. <laughs> Well, we're glad that you're here this morning. Just a couple quick announcements. Uh, if you can find Easter candy on sale, you still may be able to find that, pick up some of the individual wrap stuff, hold on to it, and we'll we'll do something with it when we can get back into church. If you've got it, just hang on to it. Uh, continue, if you don't mind, to get your, um, your stuff for the food, um, for the backpack program. Uh, when that all gets, school gets back in session, we'll need stuff for that. So just don't forget to uh, remember that. If you, uh, if you need to send in your tithes or offerings, you can send it to 91 Judy Ridge Road. That is Tom and Barbara's place, 91 Judy Ridge Road. We're not going to take them an offering while we're doing this, anything like that. So just, just go ahead and, and send it there. And I want to say thank you guys for continuing to send in your tithes and your offerings. I, uh, we, are doing, we are doing exceptionally well financially. Uh, I've talked to a couple pastors this week who have had to have uh, emergency budget meetings uh, this week because their finances have taken such a hit. And so um, I'm talking some that's down as much as 50%. So you guys have not allowed that to happen, and I appreciate that so much. Um, so 91 Judy Ridge Road, and uh, uh, we'll uh, take care of that there, okay? Um, as far as prayer requests, uh, just continue to remember each other. Uh, continue to remember all those that were on our previous prayer list. Uh, remember the Eubanks. Is is Mr. Eubanks still in the hospital or is he home? He's home. Well, I don't know what she's saying, so. <laughs> remember the Eubanks, okay? You see, this is the difficulty. You need a be able to, big megaphone to stick out of your car. <laughs> Remember the Eubanks. Uh, remember my aunt Debbie. Uh, she's been in. Uh, she had the uh, liver. Cedar Ridge. Cedar Ridge. Mr. Eubanks is in Cedar Ridge. Okay. Uh, remember my aunt Debbie. She's been in and out of the hospital for uh, this well, last two weeks or this week. But she's got some, her legs have got places on them, and they don't know exactly what's going on with her. So just remember her. Uh, remember all those that have got the coronavirus that are coming from that. Remember all the churches across the county, across the state, uh, across the country that are, are dealing with what we're dealing with right now. Um, if you have any prayer requests, uh, Pam's um, live streaming, but if you got any prayer requests you want me to read out, send them to me, text them to me. Uh, and I will try to do that, on, get those ready for next Sunday morning, okay? We'll meet like this from here on out, okay? I'm not going to send out another phone call next Saturday night. We'll just plan on being here, meeting like this from here on out. Also, I think I've even got some from way back when I was at Macedonia Baptist. 
plus our songs that we recorded. It's at www.youtube.com backslash redemption today. All right, are y'all ready to get going? Right. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father, we thank you that we can gather here like this again today. While it's not ideal the way we're meeting, we thank you that we're still able to meet. We're still able to look to our left and our right and our front and our back and we can see all of our our church family around us. So Father, that gives us great encouragement. Well, we know it's not like being able to shake a hand or hug a neck, but Father, we'll get back to that. So while we're able to do this, give us the uh, courage and the, uh, the faith, Lord, to, to, to trust you through this time in which we're facing. Father, we do lift up those uh, that are on our prayer list. We lift up the Eubanks. We lift up uh, my Aunt Debbie, Lord. We lift up um, uh, Chad Wade, Lord, who's in the hospital with a brain hemorrhage. We just pray, Lord, that you'll guide those doctors' hands and, and be with, uh, guide their, their knowledge, Lord, that they know how to handle this and how to treat it. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us. Lord, in the midst of this time, it's easy to get discouraged, but Father, remind us that uh, you're with us, that you'll uh, guide us, you'll direct us, and we thank you, Lord, so much uh, that in, even in the midst of a trial, you're still there. So, Father, guide us this morning. Bless our hearts, Lord. Let us leave here encouraged today, and we ask it in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. All right, God. Start it when Don, or you are starting.
Gotten to mention, we want to remember uh, <clears throat> Rose Marie's family in your prayers and the loss of her brother who passed away suddenly Friday morning. So uh, I think they are with us today. So remember them in your prayers. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to the Old Testament, the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. <clears throat> so if you go to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and then Numbers, we're going to look at the 13th chapter, and then probably the 14th chapter, Numbers chapter 13, and probably 14, so... You have your Bibles. I'm reading from the King James Version. The wording will be just a little bit, or excuse me, the NIV. If you had a King James, the wording will be just a little bit different. But we'll all end up in the same place together. Chapter 13, verse number 1 says, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am given to the Israelites from each ancestral tribe. Send one of its leaders. And so the Lord sends these these guys into and here's the list of all the names uh, that were that were mentioned uh, from three through fifteen. All the names of the ones Caleb and Joshua are the two most famous of all the ones that were listed here. And when you skip down to verse uh, seventeen, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, "Go through Neveg and onto the hill country, see what the land is like. Whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many." What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How's the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are, the tree, are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some fruit of the land. It was a season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rohab uh, toward Lebo Hamath. They went through uh, the Neveg and came to Hebron, and were uh, so they go they go through all this here, and then we'll skip down to verse 26 without me trying to struggle through all those words. Okay, 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. They uh, there they reported to them and the whole assembly 
and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us, and here it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We saw descendants of Anak there. The Amicalites live there, live in the Veg, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. So they saw the land. I'll stop right there for just a second. They saw the land. And they saw what it produced, a land flowing with milk and honey, a, a land with large fruit and prosperous. But then they tell Moses, now hold on a minute, there's some, they some powerful people that live there. They some, they cities have fortified walls. We're not sure we can take this. We might ought to rethink this whole thing. Verse 30, look at it. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of that land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him says, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And when they spread uh, among the Israelites a bad report about the land they explored, they said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there were of great size. We saw the Nephilim. Their uh, descendants of Anak for, come from the Nephilim. Uh, we, we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. Now look at verse number, uh, chapter 14, verse 1. That night all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. The Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taking us plunder. But wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Now I want you to notice in verse chapter 13, I want you to notice this verse 32 for just a second. If you've got it, verse chapter 13, verse 32. Here's the men that thought they couldn't do it. Here's what they've done. And they spread among the Israelites a bad, a bad report about the land that they had just went through. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it is easy if we're not careful, if we listen to the news too much, if we listen to negative people too much, it's easy before we know it to have a bad outlook on everything, to have a bad outlook on life, to have a bad outlook on our future. And this is what's happened in this passage of Scripture. They have been sent by God and through Moses to go over into the promised land and see what all they got. And they know that in the promised land there is, there is a fruit, there is a land flowing with milk and honey. What's that mean? It means it was an abundant land. There was plenty of resources. There was everything they needed to be sustained. And, and they, they have been in the wilderness, wilderness now for 40 years. And it's time to start going over into the promised land. And everything they had hoped for was there. They come back with the report about how great the land was, how, how sized the fruit was, how blessed and plentiful it was. And two guys said, listen, we can take this. We can do it. But the other ten said, no, we can't. It's terrible. We can't go over there. It's too hard. It's too big a people. We're like grasshoppers amongst those people. And so they spread a bad report. Do you know that bad news sells quicker than good news? If you turn on your television today, you're going to hear uh, about the, the coronavirus, about everybody that is dying. But do you know that statistically 98% of people who get the coronavirus are recovering? You don't hear about that too much. We don't hear about the good stuff that happens. You pick up your local newspaper and you'll look and you'll find that there's crime. There's people that have committed murder. There's people that have robbed stores. But we very seldom ever hear about the good stuff that's going on in our community. Because bad reports spread quickly. And you have a choice to make when you hear those bad things. Do you, do you accept them? Because if you accept the bad, what tends to happen is it gets down inside of us and we quit living, we quit moving forward, we quit doing what we're supposed to be doing. Yes, there's obstacles. Even in this day in which we're living, yes, there's challenges. Yes, there are problems. 
we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that uh, people are unemployed, people are without jobs right now, people are struggling to get their unemployment. We know that record uh, people are getting food from food banks and things like that. We know that that's going on. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to also know that we have a God who is still on his throne. He's not le left us nor forsake us. He still is in control and we can still trust him. And so the bad news went through this community. The bad report fled through the, just spread like wildfire throughout the camp of Israel. And they begin to murmur. And they begin to complain. They begin to say, we need a new leader. God gave us Moses, but Moses obviously is off his rocker. He don't know what he's doing. We need somebody to take us back to Egypt. Now what was waiting in Egypt for them? Bondage. They were under bondage when they were in Israel or in Egypt. They were under heavy laborers. They were brick makers and all these different things under the thumb of Pharaoh. But they were willing to go back to that instead of facing the challenges that lay before them. Sometimes the human instinct is to go back instead of to go forward. Sometimes the human instinct is to go back to the familiar instead of moving forward to the thing that God's got for us. Sometimes the human instinct is to look back at how we used to have it back in the good old days instead of making our way forward to the days that, are, that God has laid for us that's going to leave a mark on our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that a bad report can spread so fast that it can overcome us, that it can paralyze us in fear. It can paralyze us in, in worrying about what tomorrow holds. Are we going to get through it? When's this going to end? When's it going to be over? I, and I can't answer that question today except to tell you that we're going to get through whatever this is we're facing. We're going to get through this time. We're going to get through this, and eventually we're going to meet back in this building again. We're going to get through this, and we're going to, we're going to look back and see how God's hand has moved in our lives. We're going to get through this, and you're going to be able to see that God sustained you. God brought you through. God met your needs. God took care of you. You're going to get through this, and you're going to be able to see that God was with you every step of the way. You might not see it now, but we're headed to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. We're headed to a brighter day, a better day. I believe a day where people will appreciate this building more than they ever have before. That they'll want to gather together because they've been denied the opportunity right now to do it. We're headed towards a day where we'll, we'll be more conscientious about our health and taking care of ourselves. We're headed towards a day where we'll be more conscientious about not letting ourselves be in a spot where we don't have enough money to make it through when things like this happen. We're headed to a day where we're going to be more conscientious of the freedoms that we have and we're going to cherish them more than we ever have in our lifetime. We've grown up, many of us uh, have grown up thinking that this day would never happen and yet here it is where I'm standing here and you're sitting there. Many of us have grown up to think that we'd always have this opportunity but now we've come to a challenge. And we can murmur, and we can complain, or we can trust God and move forward. And that's what happened. This bad report spread through, through the whole camp, and they're wanting to turn around and go back. But if you look at the 14th chapter, and you look down here, verse 6, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, now look here, he will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord. I like this part right here. And do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Now here's Joshua and Caleb. They, they made this statement. They said, look, if the Lord's with us, the Lord's pleased with us. If he's on our side, we'll get through this. We'll take care of this. We'll get on this other side of this land. It's a land that is exceedingly good. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. And if the, if the Lord is pleased with us, he's going to go with us. He's going to go ahead of us.
Egypt's going to fight with us and we'll win that land. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. He says, do not be afraid. And so here's two to stand up in the camp and say, listen, we're going to make this. We're going to get through it. It's going to be okay. Just don't be afraid. The Lord is on our side. The Lord is with us. Let me ask you a question. Through this time, have you been fearful at all? Have you caught yourself wondering how you're going to make it? Have you caught yourself wondering, is your family going to get sick? Is your family going to make it? It's a time of fear, no doubt. And it's a time that people certainly are dying. But ladies and gentlemen, we need to remember who we serve. And we serve the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, Abraham, Jacob. We serve Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And if, if He is with us, no matter what we face, everything's going to be all right. We'll get, we'll get through anything we face. We just need to place our faith and trust in Him. You say, yeah, but what if I die from the coronavirus? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you die from the coronavirus, we'll weep for you and we'll, uh, we'll grieve for you, but you yourself will be in a place where there'll be no more sickness, no more pain, no more coronavirus. You'll stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You'll be in a place that you'll live forever with ever, not ever having another pain in your life. And we'll miss you on this side, but I promise you that if you die with the coronavirus and you go to meet Jesus, you wait on me because I'm coming too. One of these days when he calls my name, I'm going to go to that place. And so Jacob stands up and says, listen, don't be afraid. Don't rebel against the Lord. Put your faith in him. Trust him for what you've got. Now, the ones that want to complain, the ones that want to grumble, the ones that want to fuss about things, look at what they do in verse 10, 14, 10. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. <laughs> they believed the bad news. They believed it was never going to get any better. They believed that they would never get to the place that God had sent them. They believed the report about how bad it was. They didn't have faith. They didn't trust God. They wanted to stone the two that did. Isn't that interesting? The two that believed that they could do it because God was with them. They wanted to stone them. And there's something interesting happened. If you look on in verse 10, then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord, verse 11, the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs I've performed among them, I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them, but I will make you into a greater nation and stronger than they. Moses said to the Lord, but then the Egyptians will hear about it. By your power you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell the inhabitants of this land about it. They have already heard that you, Lord, are with these people, that you, Lord, have, uh, have been seen face to face, that your cloud stays over them, and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But if you put these people to death, leaving none alive, the nations who have heard this report about you will say, the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land. He promised them on an oath, so he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed just as you declared. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for their sins of the parents of the third and fourth generation in accordance with your great love. Forgive the sins of these people just as you have pardoned them from time to time as they left Egypt until now the Lord said in verse 20 I've forgiven them as you ask nevertheless surely as I live and surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth not one who saw my glory and the signs uh, I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness who disobeyed me and tested me ten times not one of them will ever see the land I promised an oath to their ancestors no one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it but because my servant Caleb has different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the uh, land uh, he went to, went to and his descendants will inherit it. And since the, uh, the Amicalites and the Canaanites are living in the valley, turn back tomorrow and sit out towards the desert along the route of the Red Sea. And so listen, we'll stop right there. 
the Lord ended up, what ended up happening to that generation of people who mumbled, they never got to see the end result of where God was taking them. God said, I won't let them go into the promised land. I'll let their children, but I won't let them because they grumbled and they didn't trust me. So Joshua and Caleb and their inheritance, their, their descendants were the ones who got to go over into the promised land and receive the blessings that God had for them. Ladies and gentlemen, mumbling and complaining doesn't get us anywhere. I know we may be in a habit in the afternoon at 5 o'clock of turning on the television news and watching Andy, but maybe we take a break from Andy for a little while and get ourselves some, some decent, some, some words that are positive. And I know he's trying to do the best that he can do. I know he's doing that. But we need to not listen to all the negative that's going on in the world. There's plenty of that. We need to listen to the positive that God is saying, that, that God is telling us that we're going to get through this. We're going to make it. No matter how hard your life is today and how difficult things may be, God has not left you. God is on your side. God is going to walk with you through the furnace, <clears throat> through the fire, through everything you face. God is with you. Trust Him today. Trust Him with all you got. Yes, it's difficult days we live in, unprecedented days in which we live in, unusual days in which we live in. God is bigger than any virus that we face. God is bigger than any economic problem that we face. God is bigger than any problem that you're going through right now. Your job is to trust Him. When you feel yourself shaking a little bit, when you feel yourself a little wobbly a little bit, that you're giving in to a little bit of fear and you're not sure what tomorrow brings, you remind yourself of who you serve. You remind yourself of who you, who you belong to. You remind yourself of who you, who you are. You're a child of the living God. You're a child of the Most High. You were blood bought, purchased by Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. We'll face problems in this world, but Jesus is with us. Jesus is in us. Jesus is for us. And no, nothing that we face can overcome us. What, what, and if the flood would overcome us, we'll die and go to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to listen to the good stuff, not the bad. We need to be a people. We need to be a people who are people who believe the book, who believes that this word works if we work it, who believes that we can have what this says we can have and we can do what we, this says we can do. Don't let the devil whisper in your lie, it'll never get better. Don't let the devil whisper that lie in your ear that you'll never get through it. Don't let the devil whisper in your ear that it's always going to be this way. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through whatever battle you're facing right now. It may not even be the coronavirus. You may be going through a trial this morning. It's completely unrelated. Maybe your heart's ripped out and you don't know how to take the next step. You don't know what to do. Maybe you're not, maybe you're, maybe you're not uh, sure about tomorrow. But I want to challenge you right now. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Cling to Him. Cut out all the negative stuff. If it includes, if it includes negative people who are always talking a negative, you might need to cut that out too. But cling to the cross. I like the song, I Believe in a Hill called Mount Calvary. Because in that song it says, I believe whatever the cost. Are you believing in Jesus this morning, whatever the cost? Are you believing in the Lord that He is with you, that He'll get you through this? Trust in Him today. Trust in His grace. Trust in His mercy. Trust in His provision. For he is good. And His mercy endureth forever. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts.